Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a Raspberry Pi powered tablet that's actually really impressed me so far, known as the Cutie Pie Tablet. Now, if you're familiar with this product, we've actually been waiting a long time for this. Originally, it was supposed to have the CM3 module, and I'm actually really glad that they didn't do that because if you try to use the CM3 now in 2022, you know how sluggish it can be. So they actually opted to use the CM4, and that's one of the big reasons this took a little while to come to market, because they had to kind of change everything over. Plus, supply chain issues are a real thing right now. As you can see on the top here, we have this kind of handle slash adjustable stand, and I think this thing looks really good. It's nice and thin for a Raspberry Pi powered tablet. I've tested a few on the channel, and this has turned out to be the best one so far. It's fully portable because it does have its own internal battery. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's got a built-in camera, round back, and an 8-inch IPS touch display. I do need to put a charge on the battery, get my software up to date, and we'll be right back. We're going to go over the specs and test this little tablet out. So far, everything's been functioning really well. I did update the software that was pre-installed on the micro SD card that came included with this. You can actually head over to their website right now and download their pre-made image. So taking a look around the tablet, on the bottom here we do have a micro SD card slot to run our operating system from. Over here on this side we've got USB 2.0, USB Type-C for charging the internal battery. They've also added micro HDMI out so we can connect this to an external display and we have our power button over here on this side. Moving over to the other side, very minimalistic, no other ports on this unit, but when we move around back you'll see that we do have a single speaker and my one complaint with this unit is the speaker doesn't get loud at all. We've also got a built-in 5 megapixel camera here, and as we've already seen, we do have this built-in handle slash stand, and initially when I first saw renders of the Cutie Pie, I was a little put off by this, but after using it for a while, it does come in handy and it works really well. When it comes to the specs of the Cutie Pie tablet, right out of the box, this is using the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. This is the 2 gigabyte light version of the Compute Module, but you can do up to the 8 gigabyte version if you really want to swap it out. So when it comes down to it, we basically have the same thing that the Raspberry Pi 4 does with that BCM2711 CPU. The display is an 8-inch IPS at 1280x800 running at 60Hz. We've got a built-in 5000mAh battery, 5GHz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, a rear-facing 5-megapixel camera, and this is running Raspberry Pi OS with Cutie Pie Shell installed. But since it's a Raspberry Pi, we do have a ton of operating systems that you could install on this unit. The main thing you'll need to worry about when getting a different operating system installed is that display driver, just getting it right to fill the screen. This operating system that they offer over on their website has everything enabled right out of the box. So right now we're kind of in sleep mode. If I tap this button once, we can go ahead and swipe up. And this is the Cutie Pie shell, and it might look a little plain Jane, but there is a lot to it. Over here, we can adjust our brightness, we can adjust our volume, and I gotta say, I do love the animations here and the touch functionality. I think they've done a pretty decent job here. From the settings, we can actually set this up for a performance governor instead of on demand. We can change our locale and things like that. And with this, we've got quick switching between windows. So if I wanna open up another tab, it'll bring up my browser. We can go right over here and head to basically any website we wanna go to. The built-in keyboard that they're using on the Cutie Pie shell side of things works great. I kind of wish they would implement this on the Raspberry Pi OS side of things because this is one of the best touch keyboards that I've used on a Raspberry Pi. In the future, they will be adding more to Cutie Pie shell, but right now it's actually working really well. We're over here on YouTube. We can go ahead and close these tabs down if we want to. And by default, the Cutie Pie shell will come up as soon as you boot it up. You can go into the settings and change this, but at any time, we can head over to Raspberry Pi OS. So we've got a very familiar operating system to people who use the Raspberry Pi, and touch works over here. We can bring up an on-screen keyboard. But when it comes to Raspberry Pi OS, I've really never been a big fan of touch. It just doesn't have that functionality built in like they've tried to build with the Cutie Pie shell, and it's still a work in progress. They will add more to it. So you can always plug in a mouse and keyboard or connect a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to the unit so you can browse the web, watch your favorite videos, get some work done, jam through terminal. It's really up to you. I mean, this thing's totally portable like it sits, or you can set it up kind of like a desktop. And we also have that micro HDMI port for display out. But it functions just like a Raspberry Pi 4. We just have a built-in screen and a built-in battery. 
And for me, what I really want to do with this is turn it into a little emulation system. I'm going to get RetroPie installed here. I did try booting it up, but I can only get it to work over HDMI. There's a little bit of work that I need to do here. And hopefully I can get this set up as kind of a portable emulation system. But we can move right back to that Cutie Pie shell at any time. There's a Cutie Pie logo up in the top taskbar. You're just going to tap that and it'll bring us right back over here. I do like the screen on this thing. It's got great touch functionality. And you know, in the past, I've used the 7-inch official Raspberry Pi screen. Now in 2022, it's actually kind of hard to even look at that screen. Not great viewing angles, even though it's an IPS. This is much better, but it's not a top-of-the-line Super AMOLED display, and I wasn't expecting that. I'm just glad that they chose a really nice 8-inch IPS for this unit. And whether you like using your tablet in landscape mode or portrait mode, they got you covered there. With their latest operating system, they do have auto-rotate built into Cutie Pie Shell and Raspberry Pi OS. It actually works pretty good. I also wanted to give you a look at the internal, so I'm going to do a quick tear down. And when it comes to the Cutie Pie team, they're really big on the right to repair. So this uses Philip head screws on the back. These are number two screws. And it's really easy to disassemble this unit. Now this does come with the CM4 2 gigabyte light, but we could put up to an 8 gigabyte CM4 in here. And it's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to pull this off very gently because we do have that camera round back, which uses a ribbon cable and the speaker. Just a little two wire plug here. Go ahead and get that off. And I'd say the main downside that I've seen so far is the sound system. We got this single speaker and it doesn't get loud at all. They've also added a little aluminum sheet here with a thermal pad. It makes contact with that CM4 CPU to try to keep it nice and chilly. And here's a quick look at the internals. As you can see, we've got this big I.O. board with that CM4 attached to it. We can easily pull this off and upgrade it. It comes with that 2 gigabyte model, but going up to 8 should be really easy. One thing I'm noticing here is the battery's actually soldered to the board, so if you don't have any soldering skills and you needed to replace this battery, you might have to get somebody to do it for you. It would have been nice to see a connector there, but you know, it works like it sits. Got that LCD ribbon cable going over to the I.O. board, and real quick, let me pull this CM4 off for you. Same connectors like we use with most CM4 I.O. boards, and the unit that I have right here is using Cutie Pie Board version 2.3. This will probably increase in the future if there's any bugs or anything like that found. But overall, I think they've done a really good job at setting this thing up. So yeah, when it comes to these Raspberry Pi powered tablets, this is one of the best ones that I've tested. It's probably the best one on the market right now. There are a few others, but a lot of those tablets that claim to be tablets have to be plugged into the wall. And this one here is fully portable. I do like this stand. When I first saw it, I wasn't too sure about it, but it does work out quite well. And I will have a video coming up very soon, so keep an eye on the channel. We're going to go ahead and install RetroPie or Botocera. I've been messing around with both. Got a controller attached to it. That way we have a fully portable emulation console with an 8-inch IPS display running our favorite retro games. Coming along okay, but I got a few little bugs that I need to work out, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. When it comes to battery life, they're claiming 8.5 hours at 50% brightness just sitting there doing nothing. But, you know, when it comes to a tablet, I personally like doing stuff on it. And I think that 50% brightness on this screen with any kind of light behind me is a little too dim. So what I did was just run my own test. 720p, YouTube video, 100% brightness, CPU governor set to on demand. I got two hours and 57 minutes out of this here. Now you can always get more by lowering the resolution and the screen brightness, but continuous use, I got close to three hours out of this thing. Now one thing I'm not liking about the Cutie Pie tablet is the speaker system. We've got that single speaker and it doesn't really help that it's facing backwards. If it was downward firing or facing forward, which there's not much room here to do that with, it would be much better, but uh, it's just not loud enough in my opinion. Luckily, we do have Bluetooth built in, so you could always use some wireless headphones if you really needed to. But overall, love the screen here. I'm a huge fan of the Cutie Pie shell. I know there's not much going on here, but most of the time when I'm on this, I'm usually just going online anyway. You always have access over here to Raspberry Pi OS, but I do think that they should integrate that Cutie Pie shell keyboard with Raspberry Pi OS. This is one of the best touch keyboards that I've ever messed around with on a Raspberry Pi. And it would just be really nice to have this over in that operating system also. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will have at least one more video coming up with the Cutie Pie. We're going to turn this into a portable emulation console. And if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you probably already saw that coming. If you're interested in learning more about this tablet, I will leave links in the description. 
If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this thing, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.